Suruche is an up and coming artist whose aim is hitting it big someday in the music scene. But the kind of popularity granted him by the media was not what uh, he actually expected. You were in a Uber, they got you arrested, yeah. and you landed here today. Yeah. <laughs> And this brings us to the much-talked-about issue of uh, Nigerian police parading suspects for various crimes allegedly committed by these men. The criminal activities of armed bandits and terrorists in the Northeast and Northwest, respectively, have for long substantially disrupted the daily lives of the people in that region. These are mainly farmers. The onslaught of the Nigerian armed forces has restored hope as these farmers are gradually returning to their farms. Generally, the situation in some locations within Operation Harder in Daji Theater of Operation is considerably calm which is evident as locals who are seen carrying out their daily activities peacefully. To this end, residents of Magami District in Gusau local government area of Zamfara State held a peaceful rally in appreciation of military operations that have ensured relative peace in their environment on the 3rd of July. The army is also glad to announce its soft diplomacy is already yielding fruits. Meetings were held at Lamingo Area Council in Barkinla, the local government area. Headquarters, Josan local government area, and in Hakimi Palace at Langai Mangu local government area, all in Plateau states. Others were at headquarters, sector 5, in Bokos, local government area, just south, and local government country secretariat at Bukuru in Rio local government area council. Those described as economic saboteurs are said to have shown a determination to continue to bleed the nation. However, troops of Operation Delta Safe have consistently been a thorn in their side. Troops intercepted and arrested some smugglers, along with several trucks, horses, and pumps used in moving illegal refined oil products. Similarly, troops recovered a large quantity of illegal refined DPK products in a compound and Makuba area in River State. These successes have, however, come at a cost. Some troops have lost their lives. In spite of this setback, the armed forces and the theater of operations and other security operators say they will not let their heads drop. They have vowed to end the threats posed by these criminals. Fresh in our memories is the unfortunate demise of former Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atahiru and other senior officers. These scenes yet again capture the grief and pain of colleagues, subordinates and family of the late Major General Hassan Ahmed, who was abruptly cut off by bullets of men given to the underworld. The late senior officer was an astute Army officer. In recognition of his meritorious service to the nation, he was honored with the following awards and medals. The Forces Service Star, the Meritorious Service Star, Distinguished Service Star, Past Staff Course, Fellow Defense College, General Operations Medal, Field Command Medal, Golden Jubilee Medal, and the United Nations African Union Hybrid Mission in Darfur Medal. The Chief of the Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, expressed deep shock at the sad and untimely event. I urge us all, and particularly the family members, to continue to pray for him. So that we too, when we go, will find some who will pray for us. It's time to now settle all challenges, all quarrels, and be one united family, and pray for Ahmed. May his soul rest in peace. It's not a speech-making occasion, but I... He sees the opportunity to reiterate the service's commitment to the families of personnel lost in active duty. The Nigerian army has provisions <clears throat> as containing our laws. What are the entitlements? 
and other duties and responsibilities for our be uh, beloved colleagues when they pay the Supreme Prize. And the Army will do like that as contained in our provisions. So the Chief of Army should check and look and ensure these things are done. Major General Hassan Ahmed was laid to rest in full military honors. Just like the sad events of countless killings of innocent Nigerians across the country, it isn't out of place for one to ask who's next, except something drastic is done to change the ugly situation. Nigeria is bordered by Chad on the northeast, by Cameroon on the east, by the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Guinea in the south, by Benin on the west and by Niger Republic in the northwest. Nigeria has a total boundary length of 4,900 kilometers, of which 853 is the coastline. This massive coastline presents an enormous challenge for the maritime industry. All of this explains the thinking behind the Falcon Eye project. The project includes the deployment of five over-the-horizon radars to cover the entire nation's coastline and up to 200 nautical miles, that is 370.4 kilometers seawards. This translates to a complete coverage of Nigeria's exclusive economic zone. The Falcon Eye surveillance system, according to Jared Levy, one of the brains behind it, has put the Nigerian Navy in the global class of sea power nations. The impact of the Falcon Eye system on the Nigerian Navy doctrine and operations will necessitate the coming on board of all maritime stakeholders to share from the quantum of information and intelligence available to make the various mandates easily achievable for a sustained maritime security for Nigeria. For effective and efficient command and control, the project includes a main control center at the naval headquarters and maritime operations intelligence centers and three regional command centers. President Mohamed Buhari, who was represented by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, says that his administration is committed to developing the capacity of the nation's strategic institutions to secure its coastal waters. Mr. President accepts assented to the suppression of piracy and other maritime offensive bills. By this act, Nigeria became the first country in West and Central African sub region to promulgate a standalone law against piracy, which is an important international requirement. After the commissioning, the vice president and other dignitaries are being taken on a guided tour of the facility which is on the premises of the headquarters of the Nigerian Navy. A Bloomberg report indicates that Nigeria's coastal waters accounted for at least 95% of piracy in 2019. The Falcon project might just be what the Navy needs to turn the tide against sea pirates and criminals on the Nigerian waters. According to the Commission, of concern at the moment is the broadcast of crises, conflicts and emergencies. The NBC is of the opinion that the reports of these events now dominate the airlines of national media. This the commission said have put the broadcast stations, the government and the regulatory body at a loggerhead. So how can the media balance all sides to the story in view of the obligations to the public as the fourth estate of the realm and its constitutional responsibilities? This is what the summit, which had in attendance the stakeholders, is set to bring to the fore. As journalists, in reporting conflicts, in reporting crises or emergencies, we must understand the issues, understand the issues at stake, and how do we now move on, you know, to do a, a very a, a very good report. Be fair, balance your report. Once you have done that, I mean, you have done what is needful. The reality of, of, of today is that the whole world is in crisis. They charge to the uh, professional broadcaster there, and that is assuming that everybody in the industry is a professional. It's also um, a charge to media owners to make sure that their operatives are trained and they know what 
is uh, the professional guidelines of the trade of broadcasting. Also in the front burner was a discussion around broadcast media regulation by the government and the impact of social media. It is wrong for anybody to say that Nigerian journalists or Nigerians don't want media regulation. I think it is wrong. It is blackmail. There are regulations already. There are so many laws in our books regulating the media. The NBC code is a kind of regulation. We need to be sure that there is no attempt to gag the media. We need to be sure that we raise levels of uh, accountability um, and professionalism on that. But there must be a balance we strike. I would not make a case for an unregulated media at all. But I would like to see a situation where government also pays attention to the impact of global media. The summit, it was hoped, marks the beginning of fine-tuning the process of engaging the media, particularly broadcast media, as partners in critical areas in the quest to preserve national unity, security and peaceful coexistence. A classic example of surety, also known as King of Madness, is what you're about to see. Sir, sir, do your work professionally, please. I'm not stopping, I'm not resisting arrest. I'm not resisting, I'm not stopping you from doing your work. I'm not saying you should not do your work, sir. Do your work professionally. You can still search me too. If you want to search me, sir, you can search me. You can search me if you want to search me. I'm not saying you should not do your work. This Uber, I booked him. The ride is still on. He picks me from my house. So the police are doing their work professionally, normally. <laughs> From the month of May, we arrested 66 suspects, together with robbers, 72 parties, 66 suspected robbers, 72 suspected parties, 47 murder suspects. We recovered 110 arms, 125 arms. Yeah, actually yesterday around about 10.45, 10 10.45 10 p.m. I was going for a short neck look for. I was going for a short neck look for because I also have a two plan tomorrow. So normally professionally, I had Migos had the general reading. So they were doing stop and start. Normal it's a general order from the government. So at the process, why stop them? The policeman was like, can I know who you are? I was not my ID card, so I was trying to identify myself with my mom. And my name is Google. The second one was like, come on, calm down. I was like, ah, this man is really a job well. Allow him to talk to me. Let me uh, express myself and identify myself. The next thing, I said, okay, sir, please, you want to do your job. I said, I'm not resisting arrest or something from my duty. Can I make videos? They gave me permission for videos, then, which I started making videos. I have videos with me. And then I make videos, and after I finish making videos, they video, searched my bag. I videoed them when they were searching my bag. videoed them, there was no exhibit with me. After I'm, I was sure they done, because it was an Uber. The Uber picks me from my house. I, what were you? I still what, don't know. What, what, I still what were you? They told me that I wanted to go and meet the BPO for conduct. Before I brought, I just saw myself there this morning, because I don't still understand what's happening. There's no exhibit with me. So, so you are saying you did nothing wrong nothing, and you just landed here? Yes. So they didn't even tell you why they're I, bringing I, I you? At all. I, I don't know the reason why I'm here till now. Because you know, uh, my, my identity looks it looks like a criminal. Like, like I said, I'm an artist. But, but, but they said um, there are allegations against you that um, yeah, you are probably a cultist or something. Uh, I'm not a cultist. Probably, like, the same my mom is telling me that there's a way a book will be too dirty that you won't be able to talk to, let alone identify the content. I'm judging by my parents, of which I have a brand. You can go with me and check it out. And I've made this clear and known. I gave them a chance to do that. So it was yesterday night. Who, who did they arrest you with? Only me inside the Uber car. Before, 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 before. Was the Uber driver arrested? No, they left him. I have to pay him and they left the Uber man to go. I have videos, I have clips. It's only here. What time did this happen? Around 11, no, around 10.30 to 11.30. 10.35. So you were in a Uber, they got you arrested yeah. and you landed here today? Yeah. That, that, so it's yeah. just like a dream. It's still like a dream to now. Thank you. What is that name again? King of Madness. There you have it. And as soon as it happens to be one of the many victims of these act. Uh, but Tony Ofoyeto, a security consultant, uh, believes that the Nigerian police should put an end 
to quality of suspects? I think culturally over the years, um, our security agencies um, uh, seems to have found solace in the act of a media trial uh, with the erroneous presumption that um, it will then um, make the public to believe that they are working. Uh, the implication of that at the end of the day is that also, you know, the process of a proper adjudication would have also been altered. Uh, the process of proper investigation would have also been altered. And also, emotions and sentiment would also have been uh, filtered in to the extent that it is most likely also, in most cases, going to boomerang. Uh, the normal thing is that um, when you believe or you reasonably believe that a suspect has committed a crime, what you are expected to do is to put in machinery for investigation as um, the security agencies. Get all your evidence, your facts and all your evidence uh, right. Even before arrest, you can invite, uh, you, can in, you can interview, uh, you can even go to the extent of uh, maybe minor, minor interrogations uh, until you have concrete evidence that the person that you are talking to is indicted or there are evidence to show that the person knows about the said crime. Now, it is only at that point in time that you can even be talking of effecting an arrest. And that is in a civilized society. And the reason is simple. The position of the law is that um, everybody is presumed innocent until otherwise decided by a competent court of jurisdiction. And now, unfortunately, in this part of the world, what happened is that uh, because people are coerced to uh, admitting guilt, uh, which to me is a lazy man's approach towards uh, proper adjudication of matters, uh, rather than do your job, you want this suspect to do your job for you. And what you do in most cases is that you intimidate and you threaten the suspects to admitting guilt at their trials. When they come to the true test of the law, they fall like pack of cards because um, the, the prosecution uh, officers have not done their job thoroughly. They have not done their job properly. And it, I think it was on that premise that uh, you discovered that Lagos State government recently is proposing a law uh, banning the act of um, um, you know, parading suspect before the public. Because at that point in time, they are still presumed to be innocent. What happens if they get to court and eventually the court discharges and acquits them? How will you be able to remedy the damage that has been done? You have paraded somebody as an armed robber. You have paraded somebody as a criminal, only to discover that you have paraded the wrong person. But the message has been sent. How do you retrieve such message that has been sent? And I think that these are some of the disservice that parading uh, suspect um, in terms of media trials and the like is doing. Um, if, if you look at civilized crimes, before they parade any criminal for any reason, which is not a culture, they don't do it in civilized crime, uh, crimes. But when you see such occasion, maybe serial killers look at it, maybe serial uh, criminals and the like who have had records upon record of such incidents and the like. Now that becomes understandable. Now I even at that too, before such is done, uh, the normal evidence gathering process would have been concluded. It would have been as good as like, look, um, this is basically to pass a message across to the criminals. Now, but what we have here is you want to convince the Mr. President that you are doing you are doing your job. You want to convince the Commissioner of Police that you are doing your job. The Commissioner of Police want to convince the IG that he is doing his job. And uh, the only thing you can use to convince those that are your superior is to bring suspects to the public and say that uh, you caught them in the act of doing this. Uh, they have hit gun in an Okada or hit gun in the bonnet of a car. This is how they did it and all those stuff like that. But as far as some of us are concerned, it's a lazy man's approach towards thorough investigation. The person who was speak last week was uh, 
uh, looking practically unkempt with tattoos all over his body. So they felt that this, this one might be one of those, you know, uh, only for them to find out that he was not uh, who they actually uh, thought to be. So the police is not a moral agent. The police is a law enforcement agent. Uh, the police has nothing to do with human morality. And I think that that is where those that are on the road are getting it wrong. Um, a man or a woman that chose to tattoo himself and that chose to wear rag and is uh, more or less looking indecent, humanly speaking, it's not your business. If you did not see the person committing a crime, or you suspect that the person is going to commit a crime, or there are evidence to show that the person just concluded or just committed a crime. Now, in the absence of all this, for goodness sake, you don't have business with the appearance of anybody. That is being more Catholic than the Pope. And that, in most cases, now if you look at the genesis of what led to the end SARS protest, you discover that it was because the police at random would pick young boys that felt that, okay, in my own generation, the best way to express my own, you know, uh, youthful life is maybe to wear a tattoo, um, maybe to wear a jean upside down, or to turn my face cap the other way around. You know, name it, just name it, the way they chose in their own generation to express themselves. Now, it behoves on their parents to tell them at all, whether it is good, decent, or indecent. It is not the police responsibility to teach the public how to dress or to now begin to judge the youth or judge individuals by the way they dress. Those of us that are wearing suits today, on a Friday or on a Saturday, we may decide to wear a jean and even, you know, to burn our head, not just to express ourselves. That doesn't mean that we are criminals. I think that it is high time the police got that and begin to understand the difference between keep morals, keeping morals, and keeping the law. You are a law enforcement agent, you are not a moral agent. And I think that that is where they are getting it wrong. Thank you so much, Doctor, once again for your time. And that's the much you can take on today's episode of Security Lens. Many thanks for being part of this episode. You can always join us again next week, same time, uh, on your darling station. Uh, but before we go, remember that vigilance remains the best form of security. Know your neighbors. Know your neighborhood. I am Victor Badeke. Bye for now.